Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today we are going to be talking about height gauges. As you can see here, I've got a Fowler height gauge. It's called the Z Height E, and it is a 12 inch height gauge. I had always seen these at the bigger machine shops I'd visited or been able to, uh, to, to, to be in, and never really understood why they were so useful and um, had the chance to buy one at a sort of discounted price. And, um, knew I wanted it for a specific reason, which I'll discuss here in a few minutes about marking sheet metal, but um, I've now had it for about three months and I never imagined it would be as useful um, as it actually is. So what I've got here is the 12 inch height gauge resting on top of a granite surface plate and the, cur the one I've got here is a 9 by 12 uh, which is available right now from ENCO for uh, only $15 and I believe if you spend over $25 you can get free shipping which is important since these things weigh uh, something like 15-20 uh, pounds. Um, however, if you have the space I would recommend getting a 12 by 18 granite block which ENCO currently has on sale for 25 bucks. You can also get the free shipping um, and it weighs quite a bit but definitely still qualifies for UPS. Um, as you can see, I don't have a lot of free space here, and the more space you've got, the easier it is to keep your measurements accurate. Um, nevertheless, this does the trick for me. If you do buy a purchase a height gauge, you do want to make sure you're careful uh, with how you handle it. You're not supposed to grab it by the top here, but rather by the bottom, which actually sort of tough thing or bad news about the height gauges is that the digital ones are pretty expensive. You can purchase this one brand new for I think a little bit over $200, whereas if you were to purchase a import um, non-digital or the standard dial type, um, I think you can get those from ENCO for something like $60 or $80. So the question is, is the digital worth it? And in my opinion, it really is. Um, it is incredibly useful, as you can see, as you're um, moving the dial here to adjust it, to read it um, in a digital format compared to using the traditional dial format like you see here on this uh, on this standard dial indicator. Um, dial indicators like this are great when you're say truing apart on your lathe and you actually want to see the inflection of the needle to get a feel for whether you're centered or not but I find that uh, most of the time when you're using these to measure you really just want to read the output. It's much quicker. So the first button here turns it on and off. I will say it's a little bit annoying. It's not an auto off. My calipers are auto on and off, which is a nice feature. So um, you want to try to make sure you turn it off or don't forget to leave it on. Um, hold will simply hold the measurement. So for instance, let's go down to three inches. So you can see here, I just, um, oops, sorry, I actually zoomed out here. I'm on a three inch uh, side of a one, two, three block and I just moved it down and I'm showing right now that I'm half a foul high. Uh, that could be anything. It could be that this isn't calibrated quite perfectly. It could be that my height gauge or my um, one to three block isn't perfect or it could be some sand or something uh, on here. This, these aren't micrometers but they're pretty good. So we go to th th the three inch here and we hit hold. What that allows us to do is move this without having the um, readout change. And then if you push hold again it should jump to the current measurement which happens to be 3.3585. Um, I don't really hold, use the hold feature a lot. What I do use a lot is the ABS incremental. That stands for absolute or incremental mode. So if I'm at three and I hit absolute incremental, it zeroes it out. And then let's go to the two inch side of the uh, height gauge. When I go down there, it should be at negative one inch. And sure enough, I'm spot on. What that means is I've moved an incremental one inch. So if I zero or if I hit ABS incremental, I swap to my absolute measurement, which is two inches. If I hit ABS incremental again, I'm back at the zeroed, and I move up and I put it on my three inch side, and I should be one inch high. Pretty close. Move that off. You can also switch between inches and millimeters, um, which you know, it's certainly a nice feature to have for the digital. I don't personally use it that often, although if you're ever making a part that has metric measurements, it could be very helpful. Um, the zero here is how you calibrate it, so you can move it down to the 
bottom of your surface gauge, you should read read zero and you can hit zero to sort of ref it. Another important feature is the tip on this one is a carbide tip. I think some of them are not carbide tips and you want to make sure that it is a sort of hardened carbide because a lot of what you're going to do, which I'll show you here in a minute, is to uh, make sort of scratch marks on steel for laying out stuff and you want that tip, excuse me, you want that tip to be uh, hard and not to wear away. Uh, this one also has the option of unscrewing this, and you can actually put um, a dial test indicator holder in here, which would be useful if you're measuring um, the tolerance of something and you wanted it to stay at the same height but show how the, um, how the slight differences changed in that height. I'll show you that. So the original reason that I purchased this, uh, this unit was I needed to do some sheet metal layout, and I also was working on my um, mini lathe mod here, you can see which allows me to have a quick change on the angle and that required very precise holes to be drilled in the compound rest which the author Frank I think uh, had mentioned that you need to use a uh, height gauge for. It's much better than using your standard pair of digital calipers because the problem with the digital calipers is that to hold your side edge like let's say we were marking on this block you inevitably are incorrect because of the um, movement along the side here and it's also not just uh, it's just not as easy to create a straight line. So the other most common use here is for marking sheet metal. So let's say we wanted to find a hole that's 1.5 inches. Use your wheel here, get it on 1.5. I'll settle for half a thou over, that's fine. You can see here there's a lock that locks the vertical motion of the height gate so you now can't um, turn it and then what I can do is bend this piece of I think this is uh, pretty light gauge aluminum and so that's why I've used this uh, right angle plate which is a precision ground plate and what that does is it allows me to have a surface to make sure that I'm holding the plate uh, square and perpendicular and that's one reason why having a bigger uh, surface plate than I've got is helpful but it'll work fine here so what you can do is just bring it up Oops. Mark your line, and then I'll mark my other line. And you can see, actually let me change, there we go. I've got a marking that is 1.5 inches up and up. You can use Dicom or even a Sharpie if you want to have some layout fluid. The nice thing about scribing this with a carbide tip is that a lot of, time, a lot of times the lines will be have enough bite out of them that you can actually find the line with your center punch Find the zero, use a center punch, and you'll be very close. I can't tell you exactly how close, but I guess you're within at least a couple of thousand. <clears throat> All right, the last thing I want to show you is I've put the dial test indicator set up in here, and this isn't going to be a perfect example uh, right now, but it'll give you a general idea of what you can do, which is the test for roundness or concentricity. Um, I don't know what the sort of expert's opinion on it is on how accurate this is, but like I said, for the home shop folks, or I used it when I was trying to measure some um, alignment for a lathe uh, chuck plate. Um, what you can basically do is set this up, find the highest point, set that to your zero on your dial test indicator, and then you can just shift the part around. And like I said, not the best example, and this, this tube is not um, particularly good um, alignment and you can figure out as you start to roll it around and you find the maximum point just exactly how, how round uh, your part is. And if you're doing something that should be accurate like a lathe chuck, you should find and will find that this is uh, pretty good. It doesn't actually have to be done on a height gauge, but it can be convenient. You could also set it, um, you could also use a, a height gauge block to set your exact point. You load it up a little lock it, move it, zero it out, and then anything that you roll underneath here will tell you how high or low it is above um, two inches. That's all, folks. Thanks.